Hello, family. It's Ariana, your tarot life coach, bringing you your September tarot scope, big baby. Big, big hugs, lots and lots of love, high fives, and some damn dirty shoulder rubs. What's up? <laughs> so I hope that Leo season treated you super fantabulous, but now it's time to get it ready, get it ready, get it ready now with damn dirty Virgo season, okay? It's time for you to put some action and some organization because the planets are having a party in the house of Virgo. So it's about organization. It's about cleaning things up. You better get the hand sanitizer ready, the Lysol spray, and the Clorox wipes, baby, because it's time to get to work, all right? Virgo is not playing this month. <laughs> With that being said, up above, we have a full moon in Pisces on the, on the 14th. On the 18th, Saturn is going to go direct. So Big Daddy is about to take control of the Celestials, all right? And then the sun is going to enter into Libra. So we have like a little bit of a calmer time as compared to July and August, but a lot of planets in Virgo. So this is going to be a month of getting things done. So starting off, what do you want to accomplish? How do you want to end this year? Because Virgo can be the energy that's going to push you to that level. Now, with that being said, I want to say thank you for everyone who has participated in the pick a cards. Those are good at any time. Um, let me know what things you would like me to do, do reads on because those are super fun and I like putting those out. Also, keep, keep yourself updated with hitting that subscription and the bell so that you'll know when I'm on weekly for lives, doing donation reads, and also when the pick a cards come out. So, I am showcasing a new deck this, this month. It's the Starman Tarot, gifted to me by my beautiful friend Blanca. Thank you so very much. I love you, love you, love you. It was a wonderful birthday gift. With that being said, we are going to have some fun with them today. So, what is going to be your catalyst card for the month? So, before you're going to read, this is your catalyst. This is kind of giving you guidance of what kind of energy you might be using or might be coming towards you. Deep, deep breath in. Which will it be? One or two. So, if you chose card number one, you have the beautiful Princess of Pentacles. And in this card, you can see how she's birthing something new. She's also growing out of her head, you know, like she's got great ideas. They're not fully at the queen level, but she knows what she's got to do to get where she's going. And so this is the type of energy you're going to need this month. What actions are you putting into place to really cultivate the dreams that you're getting done? What's interesting is she has a beautiful planet right here. And I would like to say this is Venus energy because you're cultivating love and you're cultivating wealth because of everything that's going on. We got a tree in the background. We got the ruby red slippers because I know you're going to be looking fly this month, but this is about really putting things into growth, okay? What are you doing? Card number two. I love this card. Lots of yellow energy, so I kind of feel like you're going to be working with your solar plexus energy. Look at this. Look how his feet are grounded like tree trunks. It's time to get grounded because your victory is coming. There's no more things hanging in the balance, right? This is victory. The six of pentacles is all about the help is on the way. You see this big bad tiger right here? He's like, yeah, baby. This is Tony the Tiger saying, you know, like, yes, we're going to get it. Money's falling from the sky and from the heavens. But what I love here is the little teepee in the back, and I don't know if you can see that, but I feel like this is victory coming to your home. This is victory coming home to you, all right? So cultivation and the Six of Pentacles, we have the Princess of Pentacles and the Six of Pentacles, and if we put that together, this is a month of birthing new things so that we can come into that glorious opportunity of either being open to receiving and also open to giving. So with that being said, tune in. These reads are going to be off the chain as usual. Leave stuff in the comments, guys. I love you, love you, love you, and have a beautiful, beautiful month. Hello, Scorpios. It's Ariana. Are we ready to get started with this? All right. If you're new to my channel, this is how it goes. We go into a little bit of a karma reading with our mind, body, and soul. Talk about the power animal, a little bit of guidance, go into the tarot, and then we tie it up with more information. All right. Now, Stay tuned to the very end. Put the part that's your favorite, what you really want me to keep going with because I love doing these reads. Now, let's tune in. We have Saturn and Capricorn in the sixth house. However, this does not mean that you have Saturn and Capricorn in your sixth house. This is just the karma that we're learning this month. The orange part of this card refers to the actions that are going to be needed and the blue comes to the outcome. So, be realistic about your goals, like as a full-time job. What are your goals? What are you doing? And what are you doing to get there? Not like it's your job job, like your career you're going to every day, but are you waking up every day to work for yourself? Because you know Saturn, it don't play. 
Now, be concerned about your day-to-day -day reality of serving. How are you doing with that? Now, you must want, you must wait before you can use the most business-like way and do it a little at a time. Let's not try to just bite off more than we can chew, Scorpio. This is about doing things consistently all month long to get to that final outcome, all right? And grounding is definitely gonna be needed this month. Now, the outcome here is the maturity that brings dedication to achieve service to others. You're gonna start getting a little, you're gonna have a different perspective of it. Caution regarding focusing on what is good for us and limits imposed resulting from the rules imposed by your work. Some of y'all might be deciding, do I need to change careers? Is this allowing me the time that I want and to need and to have to fulfill myself and do the things that I want and desire? So those are some things that you might be questioning this month. Your power animal is the cow. Now, you're wondering like, what, why the cow? The cow is a beautiful, beautiful power animal. Look at how she's grounding herself. She's surrounded by beautiful flowers and she's looking at things head on. And that's what I want you to do this month. Now, the cow is about patience, nourishment, abundance, fertility, female power, your possibilities, and being grounded and new beginnings. Now. In Egyptian mythology, Hathor was an ancient god goddess worshipped as a cow deity. Hathor was the great mother goddess of joy and was considered the nourisher of all things. Now, she personified the Milky Way, which was seen as the milk that flowed from the udders of the heavenly cow. She's also considered a protective goddess and an emblem of royalty. Now, this is also going to tell you that this is a month of abundance. Stay grounded. Make sure that you're being wise about how you're, sp how you're spending money. Are you being productive as you possibly can? Or are you being too stubborn and rigid? Those are a few questions that you might be asking yourself this month. The beautiful guidance that we have right next to you from the Earth Warriors Oracle by Alana Fairchild is Kanyini, okay? And of, in each other we find ourselves. Everything is connected, my beloved. What can you offer which inspires and energizes you as much as it can uplift others? Engage in giving and receiving deeply with devotion. Your wisdom and openness to life generates the healing of the earth. And what's so interesting is that she's being, she's earthing. The cow is earthing. It's going to be about connecting everything. If you look at this card, you have the beautiful baby, okay? You have the jaguar, you have birth you have you know middle life and then you have aging and look at the roots of those tree and look at the background i just noticed there's a cow look at how everything is uniting the moon this card has so much stuff on there like we could spend the whole reading just talking about this healing is indicated especially about wounds about connection and trust we are we are dealing with healing these wounds whether you're going through a relationship a friendship or you're trying to figure out stuff you're really wondering can this person be trusted can i trust them can i trust myself to to really trust others so the first peoples of australia recognize sacredness and connectedness between spiritual and earthly and the bonds that exist between all of us all right they refer to this as kanyini in South Africa, the concept of Ubutunu describes a universal bond connecting all humanity. This is a time that you're going to need to get grounded in order to see how everything is connecting, all right? Kanyini reminds us that we can thrive as human beings, but not in isolation. This is about community. This is about family. This is about reaching out and being one with everyone, all right? So let's jump into our tarot read. Now, I will be clarifying with the Starman Tarot. So those are super fun. Let me know what you think about those. Every time I say comment below, I think of my baby. <laughs> she's so sweet. She, she uses her tablet and pretends that she's making a YouTube channel. Is the sweetest thing ever. And she's always like, comment below, guys. It's so cute. Anyways, that's what I'm thinking of right now when I say that. So the Three of Pentacles is looking at the magician reverse. You're going to get grounded. You're going to get to work on your goals. And you're done fooling with people whose masks are going to fall off this month. And that is, you know, sometimes when we're, we're being vulnerable, the fear of vulnerability is what? We're vulnerable to the attack. We're vulnerable to letting ourselves down or being let down by others but through vulnerability we release shame and guilt all right those things are needed to go now i rolled a three so be prepared for new beginnings there you are queen of cups reversed ten of pentacles two of cups Ooh, fiery man seven of pentacles all right, we feel like there's no victory this month, okay? We feel like something's not working out the way we want it to. Let's look at the bottom of the deck. I'm just going to tell you what I see. 
I see a vacation uh, for some and then uh, a lot of rest and then I see justice being served somebody's trying to over control a situation about a new beginning or a baby or the birthing of something new now the Queen of Cups reverse is falling in the past position all right and she's looking at all this and I feel like you might have some new opportunities coming in but you're afraid that they're gonna be like they've always been so let's see what's going on with this Queen of Cups and I have the Five of Pentacles flying out. And it's and I'm going to say the Five of Pentacles is, look, she, they got the trash can. She's like, look at this trash. And he's like, I know, I'm so sick of trash. I'm so tired of digging. Um, but I feel like this is one of those moments where one man's trash is another person's treasure. And it's about creating something. And you're going to have to get creative because we're going from the Five of Pentacles in the past where money wasn't coming, love wasn't coming. We were stuck. But now we're complete. We have love. We have new interests. But what we're doing is we're our own worst enemies, okay? And please, if you're like, that doesn't fit me, then apply, apply something that does, okay? The Ten of Pentacles is coming through. And I feel like in the present, things are going really good. And you might be thinking, things, this is just too good to be true. Like, oh my gosh, why, why is everything coming out this way? I'm going to go to this deck because that one doesn't want to be used. So the Ten of Pentacles is coming through, and let's see which card it wants us to look at. It's telling us number six. I'm going to make sure. And it's the Five of Wands. So now I have two fives coming through for you. Two fives for me are significant to big changes. So everything is changing from your past, and it's kind of scary because you're like, whoa, why is everything working out for me? Why is this working? I don't understand. And that's why it's time to get grounded. You have been fighting for this. You've come so far. And look, both of them have snakes at the bottom. But look at those two snakes, okay? That is very different than this snake at the bottom. This one's just nice and calm. This one's like, oh, conflict, okay? There is a lot of conflict, and I'm looking at all these images. There's so much imagery on these cards. It's such a beautiful deck. I can't, I can't do it justice. The camera does not do it justice. You're fighting for that completion. You're fighting for what you have, and you're like, I'm sick of fighting. But this is the time, right? And it's because it's time to allow love to come in. Let love in. Let the friendship in. Let the partnership in. Let something pour into you for once. You have poured and poured and poured and you're used to someone taking it and not giving back and you're in a situation where somebody is actually giving it back. All right, so let's look at the energy on how to receive this partnership because big changes are coming for you and you have to be ready. This is the giraffe. You're able to see what's in store for the future. Trust the insight, the foresight, the things that you're seeing, and also do not lower yourself to go back to the way things were. Don't lower yourself. And the reason why I say that is that his neck is held high. Hold your neck up high to be able to walk away from those things that caused you issues. The five is significant of big changes. You have big changes. You can learn to walk into this situation with the king of wands. The king of wands represents an energy of Sagittarius uh, Aries. Aries or Leo. However, it's very strong Aries-like energy. So this is like being the boss hog, okay? So this energy is very loving, very warm. And the giraffe is mother totem energy. And the king of wands is like the playful father. However, we're hitting, we're hitting a roadblock, okay? And it's because you're so used to conflict and you're so used to those things and not being able to trust. And, and uh, what was the name of this card? Kanyini is saying everything is connected. And we have to learn to trust, right? Now, I want to see what this king has for you. This is an energy that's very beautiful. It does not have to be love, even though it's touching the two of cups. I do believe it has to do with maybe motherly, fatherly things. Children, possibly. Also about maybe just a partnership. Maybe this is just an agreement that we want to move forward. So is it this one? Yeah. This one? Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. So you have the numbers 344 coming out and two fours for me are very significant to having a very safe situation. So the three of cups, I'm going to say there's a possible baby. Okay. There's a possible birthing of a contract, birthing of a relationship, maybe even a baby. The three of cups is coming through by the mother totem. Now this is saying good things can come. Learn to celebrate. And the, the, the vibe I get from this four of pentacles is you got the whole world in your hands. And look at the DNA all the way around him, all that DNA. All right. The helix. 
Now, in this situation, you got everything you need to create what you want. Now, this is the beauty of what the King of Wands is trying to offer you. He wants to be your partnership in building your foundation with the Four of Wands. This is a situation, a relationship, a partnership that is going to the next level. However, you got to get grounded, my love, because if you don't, you're going to think that it's the same thing you've always gotten. And sometimes when we're about to go through that big shift or that big change, we get really scared. So by the end of the month, we have the Seven of Pentacles. I'm going to say watch your finances, okay, because this isn't the Seven of Pentacles. Like, let's, let's watch it grow. This Seven of Pentacles is like, mm, you need to be careful because um, either you're going the wrong way, you're not trusting, or something's up with this, okay? Let's see, we got the alien coming out. Should be upright, okay. This is the hermit. And what I see here, okay, because I'm looking at the card because I'm still learning this deck, is it's time to release those things that keep you locked up in your past. This is not the alien situation where you have to alienate yourself or feel foreign but it's time to walk through the door and walk to that to that next level situation all right we're moving towards the next point we don't have to wait for this we don't have to wait for it to go bad we can wait for it to go good we can make the change and if we make the change it makes the six of wands move in a different direction all right so let's see what what energy would like to help with the six of wands vibe somebody's having a baby Okay, here's Saranos. This is the life force. Express your driving passion. And you know what? I'm just going to say it. This is a month that you need to be making love, that you need to be falling in love, that you need to even fall in love with yourself because there is a lot of fertility coming from you. Remember, we even had the cow showing up. Okay, so with that being said, Saranos is coming in. He's saying with new moon energy, you need to revive your love for yourself, for your family, for others. And there's a life force coming. All right. Let's wrap up this read. I have a little bit extra for you too. So Sedona is coming in as sacred sites and this is your Virgo lesson. This is empowerment and I feel like you are empowering yourself this month. It's located in Arizona, USA. Now, this is telling you, connect with your ancestors. And it's talking about the world, the swirl there, that world of intense spiritual power. You might be, there's a lot of people who are starting to embark their spirituality. You might be stirring your ancestral waters, okay? Now, if you're interested in ancestral class and you're on Instagram or um, you want to look up this website, it's Madre de Agua Market 33. I love this woman. She's going to be giving a class on ancestral um ways on how to connect and all of that beautiful energy and if i can tell you anything beautiful about this woman is that all of her art all of her work is artistically loved by me i just i just I, if i could just like post her stuff constantly i would but then i would look like <laughs> like a crazy woman but her information she she has great information she also has a website with wonderful products but this month she is doing a class on um, ancestral connection, okay? And how to set up your altar and how to connect to your ancestors. Now, the knowledge of your ancestors is very pro profound. Let them invigorate you. Now, in the middle world, you feel that you no longer have control of what happens to you. And that's why it's time for you to regain that control and it's time for you to spend some time in a very quiet place. Enjoy the beauty all the way around you, even if it's in an art gallery, a museum, looking at photos, but it's time for you to appreciate the beauty of your life. Now, the top of the card is Boyton Canyon and it's the most mysterious and sacred of the canyons in Sedona. And it's believed by the Yavapi that the spirit of the founder goddess, Lady Kachina. Oh, hold on. Was this Lady Kachina? No, it's Kanini. Kachina came out on the other one. <laughs> Sorry. Lady Kachina is there. All right. Now, if a large and she's giving fertility, the power of birth for your ideas and ventures. I'm telling you, someone's getting a baby, getting, having, making. OK, whether it's a physical baby or a business, something's coming. If a large black bird appears to you in a vision or for real, OK, know that you're being called to the great void to connect to your magical powers. OK, and magical powers are what you hold in your in your in your divine. Your magical power can be kindness. OK, it doesn't have to be that you're going to become the next tarot reader or the next divination artist. But this is like your magical powers could be kindness. Your magical powers could be comfort to others. So tap into those. OK, now. Your crystal this month is carnelian, 
And this is for creativity, regeneration, and sexuality. Scorpio, I think you're going to be doing um, good love and body rock and knock in the boots this month, all right? This is tied to your sacral chakra, your Shavashtana, and it's great for sexuality and emotional expression. It's highly grounded energies will help you accept the cycles of life, and it brings strength and courage to you. It's also worked with your reproductive um, center, and it helps you open up, all right? This alleviates exhaustion and depression and anxiety. This will help you draw on your inner creative power and regenerate your life. In what areas of your life do you feel stifled? You can also place carnelian by your bedside, okay? If you want to create a little love and affection. I have an extra message for you. You are drawn to reflect about what needs to be released this month, okay? Keep your eyes on that because there is going to be, and there's that crystal ball. It, it's almost like... You have so much beauty around you and you're focused on what's, what, it's like in the wrong thing. Look at what's there and release, release this, this autumn, release what needs to be released. All right. You might even want to create an autumn equinox ritual for yourself to help you release those things. Now, when it comes to your health reading, you have the charioteer coming through. Such a beautiful card. I love this card because it's like, I, he has like this big, huge, um, I want to say yerba is like to clear you. It's like a good cleansing needs to happen, Scorpio. And this card is ruled by cancer. And the health issues related to this can be in the genital areas, the mouth, the womb, and the breast. So remember to take care of yourself very much as you're, as you're moving forward, especially if you're pregnant. The herbs that are tied to this are St. John's Ward and Rosemary, okay? And the crystals are amber and fluorite. Now... With that being said, the, the energy that you have coming in for you with rosemary, this is great for your digestion, great for cardiovascular, it's used to open your heart, it's tied to Aphrodite, the Virgin Mary, and spells for money are great and incense can be made from this. Rosemary oil will increase circulation and help with um, wealth with clearing and it helps with money and it makes you unforgettable unforgettable so if you got a date or something put a little bit of rosemary oil on you so that you can move forward all right this also assists with um, psychic protection and it's also great for memory okay now if you're interested in a read hit me up at ariana luciano at gmail.com or on the gram at ariana luciano be blessed fam